What is the street parking vault? The street parking vault is one workout a week for 25 weeks with the goal of helping you build consistency. You can do any version of the workout. You can customize these workouts and make them work for your equipment and fitness level. Each week, log your workouts before your time is up. Remember, your scores do not matter. You just can't miss. Alright guys, welcome to week 23 of the street parking vault. Ryan and I are going to be attacking Horace today. He is going to be doing the barbell version. I'm going to be using dumbbells. Be sure to stick around after for all of our tips and suggestions and then head over to my.streetparking.com or the street parking app for a full breakdown of today's workout. Here we go. Excuse me, sorry about that, Alex. I'm a little Horace today. Oh my god. Just gosh. a little tickle in my oh. throat for and this so workout. And so it begins. And so it begins. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. The 23rd workout of the 2023 vault is... It's like the golden workout of the vault. Right? It's the golden workout. It's Horace. It is. What is Horace? So what we're watching here is a 12 minute AMRAP, mm -hmm. as many rounds and reps as possible in 12 minutes of six power cleans, okay. followed by six push jerks into four Atlas lunges. Ooh, the Atlas lunge. Ah, yes, the Atlas lunge. What is the Atlas lunge, Alex? I'll tell you, Nicole. Oh, I can't one wait. One rep of the Atlas lunge is one lunge on your right leg, okay. one lunge on your left leg, followed by a back squat. Oh, fantastic. So I mean, one Atlas just, lunge. One Atlas lunge is a lot of fun. Uh, well, yes, mm -hmm. so much fun involved in that singular Atlas lunge. I can hardly wait. Mm -hmm. I what? can hear it in your voice. I, I, I'm glad you can. I'm glad you can tell. So we have the same reps across the board if yep. you're doing barbell, dumbbell, or sandbag. Correct. Excellent. I like it. So that's an easy conversion from one to the other. What about shift for this one? For shift? For this workout, we're looking at two five-minute AMRAPs. Okay. Each separated by a minute of rest. Okay. And basically, within those five minutes, you're gonna work through five hang power cleans, five shoulder press, and five unweighted lunchers. Okay. Um, although, I should mention, the intention behind the hang power clean and the press is for you to go straight from one into the other. So okay. basically, you're looking at committing to 10 reps every time you pick up those dumbbells oh, okay. to start off the hang power clean. Right. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're choosing your weight for shifts. Yeah. You're expected to go from the hang power clean directly into the press. Um, yeah, you know, just changing it up a little bit, expecting a little bit more out of you shifters. Right on, I love it. And I actually think that is what Ryan has decided he expects out of himself today. He Ooh. said he's actually planning on attacking this in an unbroken set for each round. Wow. He said now the rest in between each round will be changing, yeah, but yeah. he would like to try to hold on to it throughout each round. And he's also going with the extra challenge weight. Wow. That's wow. impressive. I, I, also, another word, aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> that is two types of sibs, impress and aggress. <laughs> but hey, you know, he's been, he has been um, training in the functional fitness space for well over a decade. Yeah. Uh, actually 15 years. Great googly googly, that's a decade and a half. Yeah, so uh, just under two decades. Just under. <laughs> Mathematically speaking, all of these things are correct. Yeah, so uh, he knows himself well enough. I have full faith that uh, he knows what's gonna get him through this. And 
I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, definitely, though, you should anticipate that your rests between rounds are probably going to expand. Right. You know, but I... I always expect that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely keep an eye on the clock. Make sure you're not, that not too much time is passing. That would be my only concern. And why, like, if you read the coach's notes for this workout, we're recommending, like, breaking between each movement. Okay. So the weight you choose, sh you should be able to do six reps of the clean, six reps of the jerks unbroken, four reps of the atlas lunge unbroken, but maybe you do five cleans, rest. Yeah. Do the six clean, get you primed for the jerks. Yeah. Maybe you do five jerks, rest, do the sixth jerk, that way you can go immediately to the back rack for the atlas yeah. lunge. I think that's a great, I think that's a great strategy, but you definitely need to stay on top of it. The bar or the dumbbells or the sandbag shouldn't linger on the ground for far too long yeah. between those breaks. I'm a huge fan of that, um, leaving one rep and yeah. then going and picking it up from there. Yeah. I Especially usually with something like, those. like this yeah. where each movement kind of builds onto the next. I'm know? excited about this one actually. This one looks like a lot of fun in the barbell variety because I love when you can kind of make something into a complex. Yeah. I love when Absolutely. it has that progression about it. You're like, oh, I'm so cool. I'm gonna do power cleans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then I'm gonna put it over my head. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna put it on my back. And then I'm gonna do other stuff. <laughs> Speaking of other stuff, the Atlas Lunge. Yeah. Around here, we usually see people doing the Atlas Lunge with a reverse lunge. Yeah, for sure. And today, I'm super stoked. We get to see Ryan is doing a forward lunge. He sure is. Um, what What is the difference? Like, why would one choose one over the other? I mean. Honestly, at the end of the day, it's just about preference. Okay. I do think, um, and while in theory, the the movement pattern is the same regardless of what you do, mm -hmm. for most people, the forward lunge tends to be a little bit more quad dominant. Yeah. And the reverse lunge tends to be a little bit more um, like hamstring and glute dominant. Yeah. Um, for Ryan in particular, because we were talking about this uh, yesterday actually, how for him a reverse lunge actually puts a ton of strain on his low back mm -hmm. and he finds stepping forward allows for a little bit more of an upright torso. Um, I suspect from a coach's perspective. Oh, I can't wait. Um, that really it's just about him being able to brace a little bit more effectively mm -hmm. stepping forward. Yeah. For some people stepping back, there's like a, and they tilt their pelvic, pelvis right. forward a little mm -hmm. bit, disengage through the abdomen which can put a little bit of strain on low back. It makes perfect sense. So I'm really stoked actually that Ryan has been willing to kind of experiment, yeah. figure out what works for him and like not go with like, with what everyone else does. Cause you know, if you're just following street parking staff, so many of them do reverse. So it can be maybe tempting to just follow suit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, whatever you like, actually, you know, you could do reverse, you could do forward. And you could even do walking. Like if you have the space yeah. for it, like that's that's perfectly fine. I don't think it applies to this workout so yeah. much. You kind of want to stay in one spot, but so I mean, straight it is an from option. the horse's mouth, <laughs> you can do whichever yes. version works best for you. Yeah, straight from the horse's mouth. Excellent. Yep. I I appreciate that. All right, so we see Chelsea back there. She is doing Atlas lunge as well. Mm -hmm. But with the dumbbell, is there anything different between the dumbbell and the barbell version of an Atlas lunge? Um, well, I would speak to, obviously with the dumbbells, there is going to be a little bit more weight forward of your like center, yeah. of your of your frontal plane, just by nature of like how the dumbbells are positioned. Right. I really like how she has her set up, just kind of resting on her shoulders yeah. with, a, with a loose grip. Um, if you can kind of angle the dumbbells back a little bit, just to kind of favor your backside, I think that's a smart way to go. Um, I love favoring my backside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I favor most backsides. <laughs> Just a fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like if we were to see Julian doing this workout, you yeah. know, he would be like setting them, like stacking them upright on his traps. Trap packets. You, trap packets, that's yeah. right. Um, so yeah, definitely find a nice comfy spot. Just kind of settle into it. Um, this is one of those movements where I would be totally cool with you actually resting the dumbbells like on your torso. Usually I'm kind of a stickler about like keeping them in your hands, right. you know, like if this were a front rack lunge or a front rack squat, then yeah. I probably would still encourage that. But because this is meant to be a back loaded movement, like yeah. I'm totally fine with you guys resting them on your body. Yeah, if you can find a comfy spot to put them, put them there and yeah. keep going. Yeah, like Chelsea's, Chelsea's kind of like 
I feel like found the sweet spot. Yeah, it can be difficult to find a good spot to get those dumbbells comfortably or comfortably enough. Mm -hmm. So experiment with that a little bit in the warm up. For sure. One thing I will say, I've noticed Ryan kind of stumble just a hair on a couple of his lunges. Um, if you find that that's happening, I tend to s encourage people to step almost like diagonally. So instead of mm. stepping straight forward, kind of step out and just a little bit to the side. Like that a just, wide base? Yeah, it just creates a wider base, more stable base. If you step forward, you have a tendency to actually start to step like in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So then you kind of tightrope. And it's just really easy to get off balance, especially with, you know, 115 pounds on your back. Heck yeah. <laughs> Which, oh yeah, we did mention that um, he is going extra challenge, but what are the weights across the board for an extra challenge? For program B, yes. um, we're looking at for the men, 115 to 135. Okay. For the women, 75 to 85. Okay, oh, that's um, a solid amount of weight. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a big amount of weight, but you know, Let's talk about that though. Let's. Chelsea was talking about like, hey, <laughs> she was like, what if I go over the goal rounds? Yeah. Like, you know, is and that And the bad? goal is seven to 10 for yeah. this one. And you know, if you did, I think that means you probably did the workout, you know, for sure at the intensity that we were intending. It's one of those like, in retrospect, like hindsight's 2020. sometimes you can't anticipate that. Yeah. But looking back, that would tell me you probably could have gone heavier, mm -hmm. maybe slowed yourself down a little bit. Yeah. And worked at a, I don't want to say a slightly higher intensity because it could be that you work at more higher intensity with lesser weight. Um, but that's part of why we have goals and a goal range, a low side and a high side, right? Yeah. We're trying to fit in there. You shouldn't always be blowing out the goal. Like No. No. So that's what we have the extra challenge for. For those of you who have been in the fitness space for a while, you are really fit. The extra challenge is a way to actually allow you to stay within that goal range and not constantly be just like blowing it out the water. Okay. So we are actually getting close to the end of this workout. We've got like 90 seconds left I'm with Horace. So, impressed. so Alex, who's Horace? What's up with Horace? So he was the king of the living. Oh my. Yeah. Um, which is cool in Egyptian mythology. I feel yeah. like so much of what they do is like about afterlife. Dying, yeah. Afterlife. Um, and he was said to be the sky, oh. so he was considered to contain the sun and the moon. Oh, yeah, sun and the moon. Yeah, oh, wow. So we got a little bit of a, I don't know, just a little yin yang. Oh, uh, yin and yang. Yin and yang. Yes. Thank you. I always get that wrong. A uh, little pull off the ground, a little press overhead. Oh, you know, okay. Know. All right. Yeah. We'll take it. We'll take it. One minute left for these guys. Super impressed with the with their ability to stay on pace. It looks like they. Right. It looks like Ryan for sure has been able to keep it as a he, complex. He has which, maintained it a complex, which yeah. I'm pretty impressed with. Ryan is coming to us from Bryn Mawr, PA, so he's at a three-hour time difference. However, um, he normally works out late at night. Yeah. After putting putting the kids to bed, he'll oh, work out at like wow. 9 p.m. So I guess technically this is an early workout for him. Yeah. <laughs> That's really impressive. I, I'm always really um, inspired by parents who who just like get it in no matter what. Like they no just matter figure what. out a way. It's not maybe not the most ideal, right? Like maybe right. like it's not what he would prefer, but he's like, hey, this is life. I'm living life on life's terms. One hundred percent. Just gotta get it in where I can. Getting that one last rep. There and it is. Time on and the clock. Twelve minute AMRAP, beginning, middle, and done and done. With and Horus. Anytime I'm like just one, like I just have to stay on the dumbbell, stay on the yeah. barbell, whatever, stay on the weight. Like it's such a mental grind. 100%. I can't wait to hear what they have to say. Um, Cause I know it's hard to just like stay on a barbell for that, for 12 minutes. Or yeah. Stay with dumbbells Basically staying minutes. in the same spot for 12 Absolutely. minutes straight, just grinding away. Yeah. Let's find out what Chelsea has to give us for tips for this workout of the 2023 vault. Chorus. All right, tips, suggestions. Um, for me on the dumbbell, it felt really good to like break before the atlas lunge just because it's a lot of time 
on your shoulders, your upper back. Um, but I also felt my grip starting to feed fatigue. So if you feel that and it's starting to set on really hard in earlier rounds, maybe consider breaking, doing five power cleans, one power clean, and then into your push jerk. So just one extra break. But that's what I found really helpful. Ryan, do you have any? I mean, I thought that my strategy of holding the barbell and broken was a good one for my ability. I think that if I had to break somewhere, I would have broken after uh, on the second round on the five power cleans. So then you get a rest before the push jerks going right into the atlas lunges. I, I wouldn't recommend putting it down between the push jerks and the atlas lunges. Yeah, I think barbell and double are a little bit different in terms of like how you want to break it up. Um, another thing is like before going overhead, because the atlas lunge is honestly the hardest part in the workout for me at least. Um, so as you're going overhead, just remembering to use your legs because it's going to be a little bit harder to do that when they're tired. Um, but that will make the push jerk so much easier for you and, and faster. And brace, brace yourself on the, uh, on the atlas lunge squats. <laughs> yeah. My suggestion for those two is just kind of moving like one rep at a time, right? And so not necessarily having to move fast, but just staying steadily moving. The longer that you take on those, it's just gonna be more time under tension. Um, so you wanna be mindful of that, but also not pushing too hard. So kind of tricky, but yeah. Welcome to the 2023 vault. The workout is Horus. As many rounds as possible in 12 minutes, complete six power cleans, six push jerks, and four atlas lunges. Your score for this workout is going to be the total number of rounds and reps, and your goal is seven to 10 rounds. My tip here for the power cleans to really use your hips. So during the setup, sit your hips down a little lower. We don't want your back completely parallel to the floor. If you're lowering your hips, you're gonna recruit a lot more power from your legs to help you get that weight into the front rack positions or on your shoulder. From there, go directly into your push jerks using your legs, that subtle dip, but still powerful enough to get the weights moving upward and then finishing with a re-dip under your weight with a strong punch upwards with your arms for the lockout. From there, lowering it back down to your shoulder or the barbell on your back, we're going into Atlas lunges. For the Atlas lunge, we're looking for one lunge on the right, one lunge on the left, followed by a squat, completing four of those. This one is two sets. Each set is a five minute AMRAP or as many rounds and reps as possible in five minutes of five hang power cleans directly into five shoulder presses finishing with five unweighted lungesters. Rest one minute between the two sets. The five hang power cleans and the five shoulder presses should be done together unbroken, meaning after you complete the five hang power cleans, go right into five shoulder presses without setting the weight down. Your score for this workout is going to be the total number of rounds and reps completed between the two sets and your goal is eight to 12 plus rounds. Because we're emphasizing for you to go unbroken from the hang power cleans into the shoulder press, use a weight that's gonna allow you to do that unbroken without setting the weights down. During the unweighted lunge stirs, keep your torso upright so you can focus on your legs to do all the work for you and not over taxing or over fatiguing your back. For more detailed demos of the movements in this workout and any customizations you might need, head on over to my.streetparking.com.